this is Ross from Prime Circle. You listen to the Gareth Nelson Show. Okay, we are joined by Ross from, of course, the fantastic band Prime Circle on the Gareth Nelson Show today. I'm very, very excited to chat to him. Ross, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Um, okay, well, let's get started. I wanted to know, how did you get started into music, firstly? Um, it was this, I w- walked into a hall and it was guys in a band. Mm. And I was a guitar player and a drummer, and I just remember feeling this sense of, like, wow, this is a, this is something very, very cool. Yeah. And uh, I started listening to some silver chair and obviously Nirvana and all that kind of stuff and mm. got into the whole lifestyle of it and was sucked in completely. And and the band itself, the Prime Circle Band, how did you guys get going? Um, then I'm, I'm, a friend of ours passed away and then we wanted to do a tribute show and then we played at this nightclub in a, and I was in a terrible band, a really, really uh, terrible band, mm. but it was a lot of fun, you know, a high school band. Yes, yes. And uh, we played there in tribute and there was a whole bunch of bands like Agro and a lot of metal bands. This, this friend who had passed was an, a, a metal guitar player. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so there was a lot of metal guys. And I played with my terrible band and my bass player of, of now, he, uh, Marco, he owned the nightclub. And he came up to me after the show. He said, listen, your band's shit, but um, <laughs> you, you, you can sing okay. So do you want to come and audition yeah, yeah. for a band that, that they, were, they, they were starting? So I went and auditioned and the rest is what it is. And the name Prime Circle? How did you guys come up with that? I hated the name initially yes. uh, because I'm a big Perfect Circle fan. Okay, uh, yes, so, yes. Uh, the guys, uh, Marco and Dirk, were going, well, let's find a band name. And uh, my, my band names were terrible. I came up with like Princess Juju and it was very <laughs> bad. I, I, I'm not a band name. I, I, I wouldn't want to go through that again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Marco and the guys, we pulled out of a hat, Prime Circle, and, and uh, we said, well, we'll keep it for a year yeah. until until we figure out something better. And uh, we never did. It just stuck. It just stuck, so. yeah. And, yeah. and big influences for you guys? I mean, things that have like influenced you as songwriters and musicians? Um, it's all over the place. I mean, uh, I, I know that like um, Marco and Dirk, I mean, from the, the, the Zeppelin to uh, Bon Jovi, you know, like mm. those kind of songs, uh, we were obviously influenced initially by Three Doors Down and yes, um, yes. Matchbox 20 and those kind of bands. And But we've always kind of listened, you know, we, we've constantly grown as a band now. It's like Portugal The Man and uh, yes, Louis yes. Del Mar. So we're constantly being influenced by younger bands and um, just everything. I mean, listening to as much as we can, uh, and and constantly trying to change. And I don't want to be stuck in a rut. Yeah, I yeah. Once you've made an album, I, I don't want to have to repeat ourselves. No, yeah, true. And what inspires you as a songwriter in itself? I mean, is it everyday occurrences? Is it life, love, everything else? Yeah, I, I, it's definitely that. It's definitely life and stuff. But it's mm. also the, the the fact of it being. It's almost like a currency in itself. Um, having a new song in your pocket, it just it's it's it feels amazing. Mm. It's like having. Mm. It's it's finding a new love or something like that. It, it's yes. the drive for me is is having this new song in your life that wasn't there a few moments before before or a little yes. while before. So it's just a, it's an incredible feeling to have. It's almost a super a super 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 power, you yeah, know. And then that you something. share it with the world, and they either love it or they shit all over it. And then you know this child, and then it's something that's just just part of part of your life, you know. Yes, yes. And I wanted to ask you now. I mean, this is double edged question for you. Uh, firstly, like highlights of your career so far, and then also on the other side, the regrets. Um, well, I'll start with a highlight. Um, I think just being able to be still playing, I think, is a big thing for yes, us. Yes. You know, and so we sometimes get very frustrated with each other. It's it's, it's very family orientated with yes. us. We we practically family. Uh, we are brothers in in that way. So we do get on each other's nerves mm. uh, after eighteen years, even more so. Mm. Sometimes the direction and and the, and the frustration and fear of just keeping on, you know, mm, yeah. um, that thing. But just the highlights is uh, uh, just being able to play for uh, the four triple six four and meet Nelson Mandela, mm, um, fantastic. Uh, and being able to play with as many bands as we have. But I think the Pixies was one that stood yes. out the most for me, um, especially being a we're, we're more. Uh, I think we've got a lot of ballads that have become singles. I mean, we're, we're a rock band and uh, a lot of those uh, heavier stuff hasn't, or, or more guitar driven stuff hasn't been singles, but that I think just radio has changed. Mm-hmm. Um, but for us to play that show and just to show off a, a different side to the band and, and to, it was it to be uh, just, to, it was just an amazing show yeah, just to be, sure. be playing before the Pixies. I mean, that's like my, those are my gods. And, I mean, so that was definitely another one, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, they are such a fantastic band. I mean, really. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I know you guys played last year at the Johnny Clegg uh, tribute thing as well. That was quite a thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, Johnny Clegg, uh, he phoned me and said, uh, do you want to come to my house for a bra? And, and I had a girlfriend at the time. Mm. Uh, and uh, 
she looked at me she said who was that i said oh it's just johnny clegg i was trying to play it cool but i mean that's kind of, i mean the fact that he's he is now a friend yeah is, is yeah. a huge thing you know it's a huge huge thing and such an influence in my life and, and many people so yeah incredible and the regret side things that you would have done differently as you look back at it now or is there nothing yeah the regret side i think i would have uh, i think i would have partied a bit less in some of the some of the instances i think we we really you know, we took it to the max with, with yeah. partying sometimes, and I think that you, you sort of lose memory that yeah. way. I think yeah. I, I would have definitely kept a lot more of a journal or, or some kind of thing because there's so much of my 20s that I don't remember. Yeah, but that's the rockstar um, life, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's it's <laughs> such a it's such a stereotype, but it really yeah. does get it does happen. Um, and I think you know also uh, some of the the business deals, the time wasters. There's a lot of time wasters in the industry, um, especially labels and managers. You know, mm. you think these people are on your side all the time, but they they are very self serving yeah. uh, some of the time. And I think it's just they 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 just they guard the door, and yes, it's unfortunate yes. because you know you only have a certain amount of time to do this beautiful thing, and mm. and uh, yeah, it's it can get fri- quite frustrating. And that's what I wanted to ask you next. What do you think of the current state of South African music as it stands? I think it's a uh, you know, music. It's quite. Uh, we had the psalmist recently, and I thought it was a bit political. Mm. Um, and I think music's supposed to bring people together. And I think some mm. of the the jokes were, that were made, and, and uh, there was some booing to some of the Afrikaans. Oh, there wow. were some people spoke Afrikaans, which was a bit silly because I think musicians in themselves are the people that we are the glue for the industry, for the Indeed. world. So Indeed. we have to bring the world together. It's our duty. Uh, to expose the bullshit and expose that not to be a part of it. Yes. So I don't think that was kind of cool. But I think the industry as a whole has always got uh, it's got strong muscles because it's, it's had to fight. Yes, um, yes. On you know, no matter what style of music you're playing, it's had to fight. So I think the industry is always good. I just think we need to um, maybe uh, realize that we we are. Uh, children of the world i think sometimes we can look into south africa too much and and forget that the internet is there and the yes. world is listening yes, yes and i think that we can also collaborate more and, and uh in, in terms of even just having conversations about um you know our music and, and the music should bring everything together more. absolutely well said yeah and i also wanted to ask you now in the state of world music i mean do you feel there's like a shift away say from guitar based music rock blues that sort of thing more to electronic kind of music hip-hop etc it definitely is. I think uh, even radio has said too much guitar. Um, but, you know, when the Beatles were signed, they said, uh, and this is the truth, they said yes. that they, the guitar music was dead just yeah. before the Beatles made it. Yeah. So you never know. And I think sometimes you've got to clean the palette. Um, mm. Sometimes the guitar music isn't in the foreground because it needs to be missed. Mm. It's mm. the same as uh, a few years ago, um, I felt there was a lot more um, female artists doing better because it just felt right and it was, you yes. know, it was, it was time. And then there was a lot, like the, the male vocal wasn't doing as well. And and then it just, it, it, that's the beauty of music. It flows, it's got ebb and flow. And I think it's, it, it, sometimes things need to be missed so that they can come back strong. Yes, yes. So I think there'll be a grunge band probably in the next few years uh, yeah. because that, that sound has been missed, you know what I mean? Because it's now yes, fresh yes. again. The next Nirvana, as it were. Let's hope so. You yeah, know, yeah, I don't think there'll ever be another Nirvana, but I think there'd be another pissed off young group of kids yeah. that would play. Um, there's a band called the Turnstiles that are still yes, releasing yes. very cool stuff. So yes. yeah, there's a you know it's it's got to be missed, I think, sometimes. And that's my next question. I mean, uh, I'm, as a young artist myself, for example, what what would your advice be to, to youngsters coming up now? I mean, do you think that would you say you know what, go for it with all your might, or would you say be careful? What would you what advice be to to younger artists? I think don't buy into the, you know, my, my thing is don't buy into the, the competition bullshit of music. Mm. That, that everything we see on TV now is, it's all, uh, it's, it's all competition based. Yes. Where it's not, you know, it's not, that's not all it's about. It's not, it's not a sport. Music was never a sport. And I no. think that sometimes it's perceived that way by television competitions and, and song singing competitions and, and all those kind of things. And I think that it can be quite destroying. It can ruin people's careers mm. uh, very early on and, and ruin the, the, the real essence of what it's about because you're watching it as a as a game show. And mm. I think that that's, music isn't a game show. And it's a sad thing because this generation is seen, it's, music is being perceived as game show. Yes, yes. And it, it's just, it's not about that. It's about making music and being open-minded and not, mm-hmm. uh, com- com- competition is a beautiful thing but not in that that kind of element. When you're on stage and you're you're competing with uh, you, 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 the other bands that's there and, and the industry in itself, then that's a good way to compete. But I yes. think sometimes this game show mentality has just really ruined 
music. There's too many music, too many people playing music, and not enough musicians in that element. And that's what I actually wanted to ask you. I mean, do you feel that there's an oversaturation of music with now everybody being able to make a song on their computer, for example? Do you think it's sort of brought down the quality of music? No, I just think that it is. It has made it a little bit more. Um, um, it, it can be used up quicker. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah. think that it, it's very much of the moment, and then it doesn't. You know, it, we. Uh, I've always been raised to, to, in music and thought about music is that you want to write something that might last. Yes, yes. You know, and I think that sometimes it, it's very much cookie cutter, and it's amazing for the time, but it, it will date quickly. Yeah. Um, but I think having so much music out there and having so many people pushing music is beautiful because it, the cream will rise. Yes, yes. And yes. And, and all of that kind of stuff. And it has been amazing songs. There's still amazing songs every other week. You know, it, it's it, and it's that journey of trying to find new artists, and uh, I constantly am on iTunes and, and just mm. trying to find new mm. new new things to blow my mind. And 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 when you find that band, it's or that artist, it's amazing. Yes, yes, it is true. Okay, and when you look back on your own career one day, and and you hang up the guitar for the last time, and you retire, what would you like your legacy to be? What would you like Prime Circle's legacy to have reflected? I have no idea. I, <laughs> I I hope I'm electrocuted by the thing one day when I'm old enough, and uh, and then I, I I die on stage. That would be great. That would be uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One way to go. I just have to re. I'll, I'll I'll rewire my own guitar when I was when I start getting to my sixties. Make for a great movie. <laughs> and I'll I'll maybe start rodeoing myself again, and I'll definitely kill myself. <laughs> um, but then uh, that's the kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I like. I'd just like to have maybe some songs that outlive us. You know. Yes. 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 And the future for Prime Circle? I mean, what's what's coming up for you guys? We are now going to be releasing a DVD. We're now we're looking forward to this London show. This is, uh, I mean, we're playing the Apollo with some really oh, wow. cool friends of ours. So the Apollo is going to be something incredible. Um, we've got a big uh, German tour coming up in Feb. Uh, the DVD is going to be out uh, probably Christmas time, which mm. is uh, very cool. Yes. And uh, yeah, we're constantly in studio, constantly writing, and, and uh, potentially I might be bringing out something on my own. Oh, cool. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens in that field. And so the band is still going very strong, and, and the future is... Yeah, the band, will, the band will... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll kill each other before we break up. <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> Thanks, Ross, so much for taking the time Thanks. to chat to me today. It's been very cool chatting to you. And yeah, hopefully Cheers. we'll get you live in studio one day. Maybe we can chat and get you guys to play Definitely. live or something I'd like this. All right. Thanks, Ross. Cheers, man. Cheers, Cheers bye. Bye. bye.